Okay, the concept of this first screen recording is to look at some issues around climate change. Now, on the screen here you can see an island in the Pacific Ocean, the island of Suvali, and it has some potential issues. Try and figure out what they are. Okay, it's clearly a lovely island, tropical, clean space, good place to live, but it faces one major problem. And that problem is due to climate change. Sea levels are rising due to climate change due to two reasons. One, they're ex the sea's expanding due to thermal expansion. The second one, sea levels are just rising due to glacial melt and ice melt. There's two major issues. You can see from this image that the sea isn't actually very particularly high. Uh, and the island's not particularly high. And as a consequence, it is liable to flood. So it will in the end completely disappear. And there is concern that there are 10,000 people who live on these island chains are gonna to have to move away. And New Zealand has prepared itself to cope with these. This is a slightly different image. This is a frost fair in 1684. This is central London. The River Thames has frozen. Okay, this is something that we will not see in our lifetimes at the moment. And we have to consider that it's quite a surprising event. And what we're gonna look at over the course of today's today's video is how the world's climate is changing and to appreciate the differing evidence for this climate change. Now, the first thing you need to understand and just need to make sure that you're clear on is the two key concepts. Number one, climate. This is the average conditions of precipitation, temperature, pressure and wind over a 30 year period. Classically we think about temperature but it can consider precipitation and air pressure as well as well as um, wind patterns, and these are becoming more significant over time. Then climate change is any long-term trend or shift in this. And what we can see is patterns that we begin to emerge. And this graph presents uh, some of these patterns. Now the kind of question, I really appreciate that the picture's blurring what the text at the moment, but the kind of questions that you're going to get asked are potentially a short answer question. Describe the, the pattern of climate change that you can see here. Now, what you notice is that over the last 545 million years, and this is long term climate change, climate has gone both up and down. It's fluctuated. Okay, and we traditionally think of climate change as very much a modern scenario and at GCSE you looked at it back over the last 10,000 years and you would have seen that it had been constantly rising. Yet in its tr most traditional sense we are in a period of fluctuation and we are currently in an ice age hence the ice caps um, that exist in the large levels of glaci glaciers around the globe. And we can see that uh, it the temperatures are fluctuating around the world. I'm not going to ask you to describe it now, but you can see these patterns here. So what do you need to know? Well, you need to know the three, the evidence for the three areas of climate change. We've got long-term climate change, which is geological time periods over hundreds of thousands of years. We've got medium-term climate change, which covers the last few thousand years. And then we've got short-term climate change, which is the last few decades. What you're going to need to do over the next um, few, next few periods is actually begin to explore these further. So the first thing which I'm going to ask you to look at is long-term climate change. If you consider in your blue textbook, there are various different issues which are focused on page 42 to 44 on this. The first thing you need to be aware of is ice cores. This is a relatively new phenomenon which is being explored that drilling into the Antarctic and the Arctic areas where you have land masses such as Greenland and the further you drill down the further back in time you can go and this allows scientists to drill out for ice cores and then start to measure areas of carbon dioxide and oxygen and pollen and they can look they can use this to actually explore how much and what temperatures the climate was at at the time. The basic concept is, is that the more pollen you have in the atmosphere, the warmer it was at that point in time. Now, there are other things and other patterns which have occurred as well. And one of the more harder things to uh, understand is the fact that oceans have changed over time. And one of the key things in this is the thermohaline cycle, which is the, the global conveyor system, which we're gonna explore in a bit more detail in a couple of lessons time. This is what keeps our global climate moving. And at times in the past, it has actually stopped working and switched off. 
and this provides evidence that climate change has occurred and it's created different land masses and different um, forms of um, patterns at various points in time. So pause the video and start reading about long-term climate change and make notes to explore these different areas. Okay, the second thing which you should be exploring is medium-term climate change. Again, this is over the last th few thousand years. Now, this image, yeah, this image is an example of medium-term climate change. This is historical evidence, and there's numerous pieces of historical evidence, but this is the one of the more famous ones. And really, you shouldn't have the River Thames freezing, but what we can find out is that this provides evidence for us. This is something called the Little Ice Age, and during this period the earth was unseasonally cold and there's numerous pieces of writing and numerous pieces of art that actually supports this. Second piece of evidence is something called the medieval warm period which is kind of the reverse of this and it was a period of historically warmer temperatures at those points in time. So again if you read through the information on pages 44 and 45 you can pause this and start to explore two areas historical records and tree rings. There is one more which is looking at retreating glaciers as well and you need to think about how significant possibly is this and what can actually be done with the concept of retreating gl glaciers and how reliable it is because um, there are pictures from um, Scott's trips to Ant the Antarctic which support this. The final area to explore is short-term climate change and there's two areas which cover this. There's the current instrumental records. Now instrumental records are not only temperatures but it's also looking at sea level change and this is why we know that the these islands are under threat because we can see through instrumental records that sea levels are rising incrementally from year to year and therefore this needs to be explored further. So one of the things you need to do is make sure that you understand both instrumental records and the response of ice as well. And as part of this you can go onto the BBC website or Google Arctic sea ice reached a record low. This is an article from August this year which will allow you to actually explore further the issues of ice response. Hopefully this has helped you explore these different areas and you can actually develop these ideas in much more detail. Okay.